U.S. city volunteers conduct rice distributions for nearly 3,000 Haitian households. The Yunlin Farmer Training School successfully combines organic farming with internet platform. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Siri Su, thank you for joining us. All the schools are about to go into summer break, so many of the children might no longer eat daily meals provided at the schools. This is why U.S. city volunteers flew to Haiti to conduct rice distributions for more than 2,800 households with a total of 8,000 plus bags of rice. They hope to help the families hold over through the summer month. I was already here at 5 a.m. in front of the school doors. I am very grateful to Tsiji. May God bless each and every volunteer to live a long life. Tsiji conducted a rice distribution in one of the most corrupted areas in the capital, City Soleil, Port-au-Prince. There were a total of 4,000 plus bags of rice distributed in each session by 140 plus volunteers from both the U.S., local Haitians, and school officials. Donations are a sign of gratitude. If I still have some coins left, I would definitely donate it out. The distribution was a success, and all the volunteers were on top of every single detail. Outside, the bystanders were closely monitored by the local police force, and the rice bags just keeps on being passed, one by one, never stopping until it was all distributed. There were about 200 local volunteers that showed up unexpectedly for the distributions. They were all very hardworking and organized. Without their help, none of this would be possible. Every time I have the pleasure to come assist in ensuring the safety of the rice distribution, I can always see tons of volunteers. I'm very touched by the happiness the volunteers bring to the residents. Thank you. I'm so happy to receive rice again. This will be my third time here. I love the volunteers. They are so kind-hearted. Bags of white rice atop each of the aid recipients' heads. The 30 kilo bags do not weigh them down, but it actually creates a river of love and care through the crowd. In the Philippines, Tima members recently held a regular free clinic in Novoda City, the most underprivileged city in Manila area. This time the event was held at a local Catholic church where services of traditional Chinese medicine were provided. Let's join them there. <laughs> The local Catholic church is where Tima members held a free clinic. Services of traditional Chinese medicine were provided to alleviate the pain that the patients have had for many years. I once carried a heavy bag. The next day, I felt pain in my right shoulder. When I went to a hospital in Manila for a checkup, they told me I had fractured my shoulder. Tsiji's medical services are of great help. We receive acupuncture treatments, which reduce physical pain. We realized that we felt physical pain because we did not truly follow the protocols that were beneficial to our health. This 65-year-old woman has high blood pressure. Doctors and volunteers work together to help soothe her discomforts and make her feel at ease. I am fine now and no longer trembling. I am not as anxious as before. Most of the patients here have slight pain in their bodies due to a lack of sleep and not being hydrated enough, as well as accumulated poor lifestyle habits. As life habits can influence one's overall health, the doctors provide patients with hygiene education, which helps prevent future illnesses. Seniors who live in remote areas often suffer from sickness and loneliness. Tima has been conducting the free clinic in Shongxi District, New Taipei City for years. As doctors see their patients as part of the big family, they not only provide medical services, but love and care as well. This time they separated into 10 groups to conduct home visitations. Here's more. <laughs> Thank you. 
Two months ago, the grandma was still able to walk outside and bath in the sunlight. Lately, her body has weakened, so the volunteers are singing songs for her to try to cheer her up. Every time I came here, I felt so thankful that in the dark corners like this, there are Zigi brothers and sisters who are just like sunshine, and they brought light and warmth to places that are hard to reach. Huang Guizhu has been participating in team of free clinics for nearly 40 years. I've been very happy to be working on this, and it's also the motivation for me to keep on going. I often feel that I'm a very fortunate person because of the love and care. Medical team members also learn about their responsibilities from the needs of others. When I had car sickness, I was thinking why is the road so long, and when will we finally get there? But when we arrived and I saw this grandma and grandpa, I forgot how far we've traveled. So I feel that coming to the free clinic this time has rekindled my passion for nursing once again. Zhang Shouxia has asked the grandma to be her godmother. The grandma is sometimes very depressed, so I want to be her encouragement. I came to Shangxi for free clinics very often, hence I can be like a daughter for her to have someone to depend on. The other team of the volunteers helped the grandpa to cut his hair. They've also brought him a new wheelchair and the grandpa started to sing joyfully. The compassionate team of members and volunteers have always been there for the elders and will continue to accompany them. In Taitung, eastern Taiwan, residents in Shenshu Nursing Center are mostly patients with pneumonia, serious illnesses, or mobility issues. It's not easy for them to go to the dentist, therefore it's difficult to take care of their oral hygiene. Team members and volunteers from different areas go to the center to conduct regular free dental clinics. Volunteers work together in order for doctors to provide dental services to the residents. As soon as the bus stops at the nursing center, volunteers got the equipment ready immediately. Team and volunteers from different areas in Taiwan are here to conduct a dental clinic for patients with pneumonia and mobility problems. Team of doctors were very shocked last time because many of our patients have dental calcification. It's true that we have limited skills and resources to take care of their dental hygiene. Safety is a priority concern when volunteers set up the pipelines. We try to set the pipelines up on the ceiling so it won't affect the workflow on the ground. However, this is much more challenging, so we need to come up with some solutions. The free clinic was held in a corrugated metal house, and volunteers are soaked with sweat after they finished setting up the pipelines. The medical professionals feel even hotter wearing the barrier surgical gowns. Some large ice cubes and the fan help to cool them down for a bit. When they take off the burial surgical gowns, their sweat drips down. Therefore, you can imagine, if they were like that in the AC rooms, here in the 40 degrees Celsius corrugated metal house, they will feel very hot. During the dental scalding procedure, volunteers help out the doctors with many details. We need to drain the filthy water into the big bucket, and then we need to disinfect the pipeline so the water won't drip on the ground when we turn it off. Otherwise, it may cause contamination here in the center. If patients with mobility difficulties are bedridden, the dental cleaning procedure can help them remove the calculus on the teeth and decrease the chance of their having pneumonia. The weather is hot and humid, but the feeling of helping others is like a summer breeze that cools down everyone. The ganudo soup is one of the most popular dishes in traditional Taiwanese cuisine, which uses a ton of cornstarch. What not many people know about is that the traditional thickening agent comes from arrowroot. 
not only is it rich in dietary fiber and vitamins, but it also has a heat reduction component to it. Let's learn more about arrowroots. Stir-fry frying, steaming, and boiling are the basic techniques to Asian cuisine. In order to increase the smoothness, no sauce goes to waste. Cornstarch is one of the most common cooking ingredients for this technique, which also locks in flavor. It gives a nice shiny coat to the dish, and it's a great cooking agent for making sauces. Extra sauce can also be used as a dipping sauce for leftover bread. One must be careful not to consume too much of the starchy ingredient, because it will negatively affect your health in the long run. Dishes that have the starchy cooking agent within it usually are high in calories, sugar, salt, and oil. Usually, basic cornstarch is just pure starch. The common ingredients include cassava, potatoes, and tapioca. As for the Rili tribe, arrowroots are considered their natural ancient cornstarch. Even the residual fibers can be used. Arrowroots are a natural and organic ingredient. You can make various types of bread with it. Due to the fact it contains a lot of dietary fiber, it helps with proper digestion. The arrowroot, or also known as potato powder, is one of the main food sources of the indigenous population. It's also very popular among the traditional Chinese medicine world. Its color is white, so in traditional Chinese medicine, it means it's good for the lungs. The basic taste is a little bit sweet, and it's categorized as a cooling root. This type of root is very good for reducing heat in the lungs, such as a cough or throat swelling, or some cases of diarrhea. Arrowroots can also be made into jello dishes. But nutritionists warned that these would not be appropriate for patients with chronic illnesses. For diabetic skull patients and individuals with kidney diseases, they must be very careful with their daily caloric and sugar intake, so dishes with starchy agents are not ideal for them to consume. Everything needs to be in moderation when it comes to food consumption. Not only is the amount important, but the origins of foods are just as crucial to understand. The increasing number of domestic food safety issues has led consumers to pay more attention to what they eat. The Yunlin Farmer Training School is now providing organic products, such as potatoes and soy milk. The program is working and has raised awareness for these products, which help reclaim the reputation of Yunlin agriculture. Here's our in-depth report. <laughs> Before, I was a professional soldier, but my family needed me to help with farming. So I retired and joined the Yunlin Farmer Training School. I wanted to help these farmers transition to organic farming. After each seasonal harvest, we apply for green label certification from the county government, which helps us do random inspections. We attach the certification to assure consumers. I used to be accustomed to spraying pesticides, but then I learned that it was quite bad. I later joined this group and began association and studied organic cultivation. In Yunlin, we mainly are looking for these original agricultural products, which we combine together and allow consumers to purchase things like fruits, vegetables, grains, or any other foodstuffs. We hope to supply all of this.
我是八十一。I was born in 1992 and am truly an urban kid. We do a sort of work exchange for accommodations in three rural villages in Taiwan. After coming to Yunlin, we try to reach more people. Our goal is to turn this area into an organic village. 这么丑也是很好吃。She has a lot of ideas, so after coming here, she also created a brand called Slow Farming. There is a misunderstanding about Yunlin and the Six Nap Cracker facility. Many farmers who go to Taipei's Hope Square to set up a stall encounter customers who see the word Yunlin and think that our products are toxic. This is one of the stereotypes. We use this group to get to know the different members, and if we make a big community, then we can connect all the small companies in Taiwan. We found that for the earth and the human body, it is practical to grow organic fruits and vegetables, and that local ingredients are the best. So we put this into our soy milk, and right now we have some 20 different kinds. Because our shop is quite limited, so we have to wait for guests to come. But being part of this group lets more people know about us, and we're not doing it alone. They even take our products when they go to markets or bazaars and help promote our stuff, which actually does have a big effect. In the season of filial piety and gratitude, city volunteers in Fuzhou and Zhuhai hosted events in local communities. This gives children a chance to express filial piety and love for their parents. Let's take a look. As soon as she gets on the stage, she started to cry. This is because over the past few years, her mother has been exhausted caring for them. Our mother worked very hard. She brought us three children up alone, and she had worked day and night. Hugging the mother and expressing gratitude, this is a special event that the volunteers in the Zhuhai area hosted for children to perform filial piety toward their parents. Other than sharing their gratitude on stage, they also serve tea to their parents. Before, when she came here, she's always scrolling her phone and wasn't paying attention. This time, she's really here with her heart. Also in Fuzhou, a daughter who's also a mom herself now shared her testimony after the tea ceremony. I used to be childish and made my mother angry. Here, I want to apologize to my mom and I love you very much. I love you all. There is also someone who expressed gratitude toward her stepmother at the venue. Mom, although I'm not your own daughter, but I will take care of you like my own mother. A simple sentence has touched all the participants' hearts. This is the most beautiful scene and loving connection in life. In Malaysia, Penang Tsuji Kindergarten has held a small Buddha Day ceremony at the Tsuji Educational Center. The participants include the kindergartners as well as the students from Tsuji's after-school program. The young kids seize the occasion to pray for the world and people around them. I pray for a harmonious society and a world free of disasters. I pray that everyone in the world can be safe and have good health. Penang Tsuji Kindergarten is holding a small Buddha Day ceremony, during which the children pay respect to the Buddha. Children are very pure and they want to get rid of their bad habits. When I asked them what the fragrance water is for, they said, we do not wash our hands, but we cleanse our minds. Students from the after-school program also joined the ceremony with their younger siblings. I'm very happy to participate in the Buddha Day ceremony. I reminded myself to remain dignified while doing the walking meditation because the younger students were watching us. The children, that are mothers and teachers also provided a mobile Buddha Day ceremonies for residents in the community. 
for us. We brought the Mobile Buddha Day ceremony to the residents near our school. I hope they will be out of harm's way after participating in the event. Since they could honor the Buddha at school, they could also provide the opportunity for the neighbors to pay their respect to the Buddha. As the children invite the neighbors to honor the Buddha, they've also inspired the residents' compassion. The kid at Tsuji Kindergarten in Malaysia went on a field trip to the local Jingsi Hall to experience all the historical moments of Tsuji. Let's join them there. Looking up at the tall ceilings and then look directly onto the floors, each detail is fascinating to the Kadat Tsuji kindergartners in Malaysia. The field trip to the Jingsi Hall was one to remember. The next step, Compassion Central. This is my milk bottle. I have turned it into a coin bank. When you fill it up with coins, then I am able to help many people. We made what Master Zheng Yan used to eat in the old days because we wanted to experience it firsthand. The ingredients were very cheap and simple. This is how they could save money to help the neediest at the time. When I was eating the food earlier, there was some ginger in it. I was very brave and ate it all because we cannot waste any food. A frugal lifestyle is quickly adopted by the children, and they cannot wait to share it with others. In Malaysia, the 30-day Veggie Planet Passport campaign held by Tsuji Joho Baru Kindergarten has come to an end. Among the children who passed through the test was five-year-old Suru An. Let's learn more about his determination to embrace vegetarianism. Do not eat meat because animals are our good friends. We will be healthy and can save the earth if we adopt a vegetarian diet. He often says that we should not eat meat. We should save the earth and protect the environment because animals are our good friends. Ong Jin Wen encourages her children to embrace vegetarianism to protect animals. Once he said in the morning that he wanted to eat bread with meat floss on it, I then told him that meat floss contains meat. He asked me what kind of meat it was. After I told him it was pork, he no longer said he wanted to eat it. To support the Veggie Planet Passport campaign, we cook only meatless food. We all adopt a vegetarian diet because we think it is something we should do. In the company of parents, five-year-old Su Rei An was firmer in his determination to protect animals and was able to get through the 30-day task of Veggie Planet's passports campaign. In Canada, parents and students from Misoga Tsuji Academy recently joined Tsuji volunteers in cleaning up the rhododendron gardens near Lake Ontario. We'll leave you with these images at the end of our program. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.